Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to show you how to do a simple wrap for a, I'm going to do raw crystals as you can see here. Um, this is a tumbled stone. This is a one wrap style I did. This is another stone that I did. This is also tumbled. This is a lapis lazuli. And this is a snowflake obsidian, if I'm not mistaken. And then this one here is actually a raw chunk of amethyst. So if you would like to see how you can wrap some of your raw crystals or tumble stones that you'd like to wear as a piece of jewelry, please stick around and I'll show you what I feel like is a simple way to do it. So. First, you have your wire. The gauge that I currently have is 16. I use this for lock jewels and several other things. I like that it's firm, but it's still easy to manipulate by hand, which is a positive when you're doing this project. So I have my wire. I have, this wire is also copper. This one is copper wire, golden tone, which means that the actual copper is covered up with this golden color over time this golden hue will wear and you will have more of a raw copper tone like this that's just something to keep in mind when you're using the copper wire um that is covered in other colors you can get it in a variety of other colors this silver that you see here is also copper that is covered i've had this piece for a long while well over a year and you can see it's still in excellent condition as far as the finish. However, I don't mind when the finish starts to rub because it just gives more character to the piece. And then also, um, I like the look of copper. So let's go ahead and first things first, I think for this video, I'll show you with the rose quartz. This is a chunk of, of rose quartz. You can see, um, you know, pretty big size. Put it in my palm here for you. So that can give you an idea of the size. This is a piece of amethyst. So I'm gonna move that up there. And then we're gonna be working with this piece. First thing you wanna do is get a piece of wire. I don't use exact measurements. However, I would say that you want to have give yourself extra you'd rather have it be too long than be too short just so you can get enough enough of a wrap on um, style the way that you want i say at least 18 inches so that's a foot and a half um but again i don't measure exactly i just like to eyeball it and see what i feel like would be enough so this is about, oops, this is about, um, I'd say a foot and a half. I think that's good. So you're gonna go ahead and use, these are wire cutters, but depending on how thick the gauge is, you could just use regular scissors if that's what you have. Um, but this is inexpensive. I got this set, it was like a six piece set um, from Michaels and it was under $10. So. Next, I like to just slide my fingers along the wire like this. This is called wire hardening. And it just firms up the wire and prepares it to hold the shape that you're gonna give it. So, now that we have the wire, I like to take the piece of crystal that I'm gonna be working with and find a space where I'm going to anchor my wire and you'll see what i mean because as you can see this is a raw chunk of crystal there are no holes drilled into it so you have to create your wrap in a way that holds this securely and um you know makes it so that you can wear it as a piece of jewelry so this looks like a pretty flat space right here that i think i might want to work with so this is very much a free form wrap style that I'm about to do right now. I don't uh, necessarily, well for this one, I'm definitely not, but just in general, I don't necessarily have a pattern that I follow. I like to work with each piece individually as far as how it looks to me and what will look 
good. So I started this little cross right here. I'm gonna use my flat nose pliers to anchor this while I twist it. Okay, there you go. Go ahead and give that a couple twists. It's not gonna be fully tight yet, but that is okay. Now this is important because this is the initial uh, hold that's going to be on the crystal. So now that I know I have my wrap anchored in this, um, this section right here where I want it to be, I like to work with one wire at a time. And then so, since this has ended up with one shorter piece and one longer piece, that's okay. Um, sometimes I make sure it's right in half in the middle. Oh, hold on guys, I'll be right back. All right, so now that when you have your base piece secured, this is the part that's gonna hold your stone in place. I just did a little twist here and bent that down. Now from this point, I just like to kind of go with the shape of the um, of the wire, of the stone rather. And I like to put loops in to mine. So you take the round needle nose, just wrap it around there just to give you that start of a loop. Feel free to manipulate with your hands as well as you go. Sometimes I create a loop without using the, um, the pliers. It just depends on what you wanna do. So now, because I have this long piece here, and since I left this part shorter, and um, then this, I wanna make sure that now I secure the top, and this is where you're going to have your um your loop like this so that you can put your cordage through there to wear it so let me just look at how i want to do this here i'm gonna lean this one out of the way i think i want to take my longer one and come around here like that okay so now Gonna get this right here. I'm gonna create a twist. <laughs> All right, everybody. So at this point, um, as you heard in the background, my kids were getting kind of noisy. So I'm gonna do a voiceover from this portion. But basically here, I am anchoring the two wires together at the top, as you can see. And this is where I'm gonna create my loophole for where you can put um, you know, whatever cordage you're gonna wear it on. Also here, you see me flattening the loops. As you move the wire, other portions of it will move as well. So I just like to keep going back and making sure everything is staying in place and stiffening where I want it to. And then um, after that point, once it's all said and done, you won't have to worry about that, it'll stay in place. So I'm just creating another loop effect here as I have on along the side. And then you're gonna see me um, squeeze this here that's because I want no space in between my loops and as you can see right there that took care of that now I'm gonna go on and trim the piece that I have left sticking out there on the shorter cord and then I'm going to proceed to create the loops with the longer piece
as you can see here, I'm, I've made the loop and now I'm going to take the remaining wire that I have and I'm going to um, work it into the design. So I'm just using the pliers to straighten out any kinks because you're going to be twisting and turning this wire. It's going to be hard to keep it straight all the time. So that's why it's important to have your tools handy. So I'm just creating a couple of more loops to finish up my design and to use the rest of the wire that you see here. So now as you can see for this one, the cordage will go through here and the piece would hang like this. Because this is such a different style shape, I was wanting a little bit of a different um, dimension. So I wanted it to hang a little off to the side. So this is why I anchored here. And this is where I mean, pick the natural divots and creases and cuts in your stone to anchor your wrap. And this wrap is very sturdy, it's very secure, and you're all set to go. And you can, the hole is big enough to where you can place it on your favorite quarters. If you have a specific chain in mind or a cord, make sure that this opening is left large enough. Make sure that opening is left large enough to accommodate it. I use these here. Obviously, the further you go down to the base, the bigger your loop is going to be. But if you know you need a bigger opening because you prefer a thicker chain, use a different type of a dowel or something that has the circumference that you need so that you make sure that you have a big enough opening. So this is my how to wrap a raw crystal. Thank you for watching. And if you would like to see more styles such as these that i also made you can head over to my etsy shop that's my daughter you can head over to my etsy shop and see the different styles that i have available for purchase so once again thank you for watching and i will see you in my next video bye guys